again. Screen one. Share. Let me know when you guys can see it. You got it. It is working. Yes. Your computer's better than mine. Okay. Here we go. Yo, you can transfer and receive payments faster and more easily than with traditional methods like checks. As you can see, mail made it out safe. Now without the hard hat. Three, two, one. Sorry, guys. Let me back it up a little bit here. This is dealing with hard hat safety. Personal protective equipment, commonly referred to as PPE, is specific equipment worn to minimize hazards in the workplace. These injuries may result from contact with chemical, physical, electrical, mechanical, and other workplace hazards. In order to get the full use out of your PPE, the equipment should be safely designed, maintained in a clean fashion, and fit properly. One of the most common yet overlooked pieces of personal protective equipment is the hard hat. Today we are going to test the importance of our ANSI Z89.1 Type 1 Class E Stands Hard Hat on our volunteer melons. Four objects commonly found out in the field, each of varying weights, will be dropped from 20 feet, both with and without the proper protective equipment. Ouch. We will begin with a washer, weighing less than a pound. Falling at a speed of 25 miles per hour, this washer will have an impact of approximately 61 pounds of force. Three. Two, one. As you can see, mail made it out safe. Now without the hard hat. Three, two, one. Rose. <laughs> That's a legit one. Oh. With this light little washer, Mel's not feeling too good after that. The next object to be dropped is a three quarter by 22 inch machine bolt weighing two pounds. This will have an approximate impact of 122 pounds of force on the melon. Three, two, one. Scratch, mix from the thread. Pretty even skinny than that. Now, without the stands hard. Three, two, one. Now. Lady went all the way through. I got hit by a one volt one. It's bad on my call one point. It's bad. That looks painful. So yeah. the bolt, without the hard hat, went all the way to the melon or the head. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be tough to let this one go, guys. Next, a three and a half pound hoist handle will be dropped, creating up to 213 pounds of impact on our unsuspecting mouth. Three, two, one. Skimmed a little bit. Still survived. Scuffed up her forehead a little bit, but you're gonna get that. That's not too bad, though. Again, but this time without our hard hat. Three, two, one. That hoist handle is sweet and good. Uh, Thinks he's allergic. Went through both the right eye all the way through, and I probably would have poked all the way through, but uh, all over there. Some humpy dumpy stuff right there. <laughs> Final object is a pull top pin with insulator installed weighing approximately eight pounds. This should create up to 488 pounds of force. So, oh, that makes my neck hurt. So it was a direct hit right on the top. All we have is one little mark on our wrist. 
it was hard enough that collar pushed on the bottom, everything looks good. And finally, without our hard hat. Okay, and three, two, one. Ah. Mm. Uh. Man. <laughs> oh. It stopped on the collar, it probably would have went all the way through. That's impressive. That don't make you believe we're in a hard hat. You want some more milk? Why not? The effects of a hard hat are obvious, but one's personal protective equipment should be the last line of defense. Safety requirements may seem inconvenient at the time, but in the end, it could save your mouth. Don't forget the importance of your PP. And remember, safety is so sweet. Mm. Mm -hmm. Makes me want to carry some watermelons out to the field next time. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. it's like savage. Safety's so sweet. Yep. <laughs> um, that is, I know we don't really have a, we've got a few hard hats, not many. Some of you guys do wear your hard hats. And that's um, really appreciated because they do say, um, I was just, you know, listening to what Ryan said about, you know, hitting his head on the bolt up the pole up there, you know, possibly if he'd have had a hard hat on the pole, um, he, he may could have, you know, avoided a little bit of pain to his skull. So um, they do provide, you know, protection, not just from falling objects, but hitting your head on the objects up a pole, um, maybe come in an incidental contact with a conductor. You know, they are rated, uh, electrically rated as well, the ones that we wear. So it's a good piece of equipment to have, to maintain. You have to, just like any other piece of your safety equipment, you do need to take care of it, maintain it, make sure it stays as clean as possible and maybe clean it at times. Uh, it'll keep you safe. Yep. Professor Shoemaker? Uh, yeah. Uh... I, you know, this came up plenty of times in the safety meetings we had at work. Can you, uh, especially with an electrically, a dielectric hard hat, one that's supposed to be insulated, can you put stickers on it? No. Oh. You're not supposed to. If you put a sticker on a hard hat, it degrades the uh, insulation value that's on it. Uh, when you clean a hard hat, watch what you clean it with. Use a mild soap or we used to use glass cleaner all the time. Uh, don't keep clean it with any kind of solvent, like a cable cleaner or alcohol or gasoline or anything like that. Another thing you got to look out for is, is wear it properly. Is the uh, hard hat liner supposed to come all the way down to your ears? No. No, no. If you get that hard hat liner down to your ears and something impacts, it's going to take part of your ear off. So uh, wear it snugly above your ears. And uh, just like Professor V said, you know, take, take good care of it, clean it every so often. I, I've yeah. heard that some companies out there have a change out schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we didn't, you just, if you saw a defect in it or, or starting to get what they call UV damage or something like that, you can get a new hard hat. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've heard other companies say that they, you know, go on a one-year plan that even if your heart has a decent shape, change it out and get a new one. We we change ours out like every five years. Every five years, wow. Yeah. Okay. So uh, good good idea on heart rights, which does bring me up the question right here. Uh, when's Mark Jones coming? Where you at, buddy? I'll email him right now. There he is. Okay. okay. Uh, he said he would be here this week, and I have not heard from him. So if you hear anything from him, do let me know. Okay. So let's go ahead and get back into a share here. I am going to start just for review. Uh, let's see if you guys have a little bit of, I remember. Share screen, we're gonna get a whiteboard, share that up. Let me know when you see it. Almost, almost, it's there. Okay, so when we're talking three-phase configurations, and like I said before, 
when we have three phase, it's in the transformation process. So we can transform from uh, one type of three phase to another type of three phase, or we can transform to the similar, just raising or lowering our voltage. I'll draw just a couple of diagrams here. land out here. We don't oh, have our own water milk. Wow. It's all right. Go ahead. It's no problem. Okay, what kind of diagram is that? Your Y. Y. Excellent. And it's spelled W-Y-E. And it's in the shape of a Y. All right. And you might as well go ahead and get in the uh, mode of saying it's a grounded Y. What is that? A delta. Delta, right. And last but not least. Oh, sorry. Control Z for the whole thing. It's my bad. Y. Oh my goodness. Draw. Okay, there we go. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. Here. And what is this one? Open delta. Open delta, because we have an open side. Now, when you see the open delta, you know, it's just the way I draw it. This is the open side. It can be any one side that's open. So don't uh, get confused if you see another one that's, you know, got this side where the arrow is closed and one of the side open. They're all open delta. Okay. And you know what, Professor V, I'm just going to go ahead and go into the rotation part here and have that knocked out for the exam. Okay. Professor D is uh, muted. Okay. Right, right, so we had discussed yesterday when we were looking at these different types of diagrams. I mean, on Monday, we we're talking about different types of diagrams. If we look at an overhead line or the phases coming into or out of a transformer, we designated these with letters. And what were those letters? A, B, and C. A, B, and C. And A. B, and we're just going to leave this as it is right now because you have to have current flow. This is actually going to be grounded in the future. You'll see how that works. So in three phase, and you know, essentially in single phase, we'll discuss that in just a moment. When we see a three phase line on a pole, just like this, and I'm going to put the neutral down here, ground our neutral. Remember the two guys that were in the bucket truck they were using the phasing sticks. They were working with three separate phases, A, B, and C, All right? Now, when you look up at a power pole and you see it in the air, even the ones we have out there in the field, is it 100% of the time, A, here's my phase, B, and C, left to right? Probably not. No, no, it could be a mix. It can be B, A, C. It can be C, A, B. It can be a mix of all three. You don't really know that when you're looking up at the line. Uh, there are methods to find out about it. We'll talk about those in the future when we get into electrical power systems. But you don't know 100% of the time if they're A, C, or A, B, or C, unless you break out the phase and sticks and you do some other procedure out there in the world. All right. If I've got, let me go clean that up. So on a, if I have two phases of primary and then one neutral, it might be an A, a B, or it might be a C and an A. So you guys get the gist right here. It might be a B and an A. It's going to be a mixture of different phases all along. And if you have one phase, this might be A, B, or C. 
All right, that's how the utility industry designates phases by letter. They also do this by color. We're gonna to get to that as soon as I clean this up. Anybody had, uh, I think, what was it, Ryan Embry? He does some air conditioning work, right? Some air conditioning work? Yeah, AC work, or who, who in here has done AC work before? No, not me. Okay, how about any, any electrician work? Nobody? I used to. I, I used to. Yeah. I, when the, being an electrician, when you're color coding wires, how do you color code three phase? Uh, you use brown, orange, and yellow. Brown, orange, and yellow. Thank you very much. That's, yeah, that's for high voltage. And the, and they use and this is the terminology for an electrician now, guys. B O Y. I mark my wires B O Y. So I've got brown, orange, O R A N G E, and yellow. Now there has to be a what they call a debarkation point. I need to know the difference between electrician and lineman. Okay. There has to be a difference in there. Lineman's a little bit easier. It's and this is A phase, B phase, C phase. A lineman's going to do it a little bit differently. They they need to. So we know what belongs to the power company, what belongs to the electrician. A, B, C is R, W, B. Red, white, blue. Okay. It's A to A, B to B, C to C, electrician side, B, O, Y. Lyman side, R, W, B, red, white, and blue. And you're just going to use marking tape on your conductors, or you can actually use lettering on a cross arm that will show you the designation of the phase. Any questions there? Okay. So when we work with our phases, I'm going to put them over here in my Y diagram. This is B, this is C, and this is A. What are you going to mark the conductors with? B. White. Right. What are you going to mark C conductor with? Blue. Excellent. And what are you going to mark A conductor with? Red. Excellent. Okay. Red, white, and blue. Fantastic. Mr. Shoemaker. What's up, buddy? Or uh, the RWB, right? Who, um, what publication um, uh, designates that? Is it the. What the publication designates that? Ooh, wow. Uh, the you know, like um, the Shoemaker book of doing it right. Okay, you know, because uh, the NEC, the NEC will tell me, um, uh, you know, the uh, the brown, uh, red. I'm gonna say I'm sorry. Brown, orange, and yellow. Uh, you know, it's for three phase. The NEC will tell you that. But what tells? Is there any publications that that will state that our what, what tells right? me? Uh, that I need to be red, white, and blue on the uh, utility side? Yes, sir. Every utility in the United States. Okay, so there's no, there's no got, there's no. What, what I mean, I'm going to have to do some story? investigation on it. Um, okay. Does it need to be written down for you to do it? Um, I mean, uh, you know, just when it comes to regulations and stuff like that, I don't know, you know, like, I, I mean, I, I, I figure NSC is the authority in the electrical world, the National Electrical Code, you know, by the fire station. I, I, well, it's, it's the authority of the, yeah, the residential side of it. Yeah. yeah I mean, even even in the commercial side. And, and I agree, the commercial side also. Is it the regulated to the authority on the utility side? Oh, no, the NEC does not go on the utility side. There I you go. So I don't know. If but as far as, uh, as far as utility safety, goes, I know it's, uh, IEEE is the authority. No, OSHA is the authority. Well, yeah, yeah, there's OSHA, but when it comes to electrical safety, there's a, hold on, just give me a second. Mm -hmm. Let me throw something in Google here real quick. Uh, 
what authority designates any she red, white, this is uh blue national electrical code right by the national uh phase agency and then there's um there's the n e i'm sorry the n e s c n e s c yes yes sir the n e the n e s c which is the national uh national electrical safety code okay by the i triple e you know so i, I know like as far as I know OSHA is like uh, pretty much standard when it comes to like uh, just general safety, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, going up on a, on a ladder, you know, using a car hat, using protective gear, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, I, I was wondering if that was the any, I mean, I, I, I haven't, I'm gonna be honest, I haven't looked too deep into that book, you know what I'm saying? I, I, it was given to me. Okay. And, yeah, but I, I was wondering if that was, you know, from, from that. I'll have to look it up. Yes, sir. That's just the way we've done it across the entire United States. Roger. Okay. If you want to, you can look it up. Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right. So red, white, and blue on the utility side, BOY on the uh, residential or commercial side, as far as three phase is concerned. Now, you don't get this confused. I'm going to draw some wire diagrams out here. Uh, Professor V, you can jump in this too because I know you've seen some different ones that are going on out there. We're talking three phase, correct? Correct. All right. In single phase, and this is what some electricians will do, you've got to match it up. In three phase, I'm going to draw up all, all four wires. You've got a neutral, you got an A phase, you got a B phase. And you got a C phase, and we know red, white, blue. Okay. In single phase, you will see cases, and this is depending on the electrician. Is there color coding in single phase? So I've got a neutral, and I've got two hot wires. Uh, red and black, right? Anybody? I agree. Now, now you as a utility in overhead, and you've seen our wire that we've got sitting out in the field, the neutral is going to be bare, nothing on it. So it is easily identifiable. It's a bare aluminum wire, wire. And these two are insulated. In underground cable, this is not going to be bare, and it's going to have a yellow stripe. And these two will be insulated. What about the electrician side? Is there anything that will identify, I'm gonna put three conductors over here for 120, 240. What do they do? Um, they, uh, it, well, they use another color code for... Uh, well, typically, and Professor V, uh, jump into this for your historic. Typically, you're gonna have two hot wires and an electrician is going to use an insulated wire for the neutral. He's going to put a white piece of tape around it. Right. Okay. Professor V, have you seen things that have been different? No. It, the neutral's always been um, marked with white tape, the ground with green. Okay. Well, I, I know from my experience out there in the world, I guess they get away with this in an inspection. Uh, the electric puts on a marking on this cable, whatever tape he's got on the truck. Mm. So if he's out of white, he mark, mark, might mark it yellow. Or he might mark it with a red piece of tape. The, the thing that he's trying to do here is, I designate this wire as the neutral, and the other two are hot for whatever they had. So they, mm -hmm. are they really following code? Probably not. But you guys need to look out for one is tape, the other two are not, no matter what the color it is. And that's underground, you said? That's both, uh, well, when you get to the electrician side, everything that it's overhead and underground, everything they have is insulated. Yeah. On the utility side, our neutral is bare in overhead and uh, insulated in underground with a yellow stripe. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, V, do you know what page that location meter was on? 
Yeah, that is, looks, let's see, phase rotation is 300. I got 306, 311, maybe three. Okay. If you could do me a favor, you just bring up a picture of the one we used. Yes. While three, I draw it out here. 315. 315. Phase, phase rotation. Yeah, that's the page. He's looking for a picture of a meter. They got a kind of an old one on 316. Yeah. Let me. I don't want that one. Yeah. Okay. So All let right. me stop this share real quick. I'll get one up here. You're going to get one over there? Okay. Yeah. So with, with uh, what time is it? Looking at 835. No, we'll go with it. Okay, so let me clear the screen off. Stop share. So when we're uh, using three phase, and we have three phase going to a uh, establishment, you guys know all the uh, stuff that we talked about before. We've got voltage all the time. And what we're able to do with three phase, when we're using three phase, I, I can now introduce uh, what they call rotation. It, three phase is very, very good for uh, powering motors. And that's mostly what it's used for. Now, of course, the utility industry is gonna have three phases on a pole to evenly distribute power too. But a main, main benefit here is I'm gonna have the capability to power a motor with three phases. So you remember that generation picture we had? We had rotation of the magnet, correct? Mm -hmm. And we had the A phase, we had the B phase, and I'm a little bit off here in Greece and the C phase. And all that time, we had rotation of the, uh, of the generator in our generator plant. Now, as far as I know, and I'm not a authority on this, all generating plants generate in what they call a clockwise rotation. So clockwise on my rotation, and they're going to come out of the generator with A, B, and C. If I follow my entire transmission system and my entire distribution system, and I then wire my motor with A, B, and C, it should match. My motor is going to rotate in the same direction. That's the plan. And that's what you want to happen out there in the world. But we've already discussed, well, through all of my transmission, oops, don't know how to do that. Through all of my transmission and all of my distribution, can I keep the same configuration all the time? A, B, C, A, B, C? Probably not. No, it's no. Good. It's really good that one. Yeah, I'm going to turn corners. I'm going to go straight and tap off. So A, B, C is not going to be in the configuration all the time. All right. And in some cases, you're going to get a clockwise rotation. Now, on a new install, It's the customer's responsibility to get his wiring to the rotation that he needs. So right. I can install and I can check my rotation. That's what Professor B's working on. I can check my rotation and it'd be clockwise, like you see right here, or it could be counterclockwise on a new install to a customer. Then the electrician on his side, he's gonna work out what he needs to do to get the correct rotation he needs. Obviously, you don't want motors running backwards, do you? Right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You don't want motors running backwards, but on a new installation of power to an establishment, it's the customer's responsibility to get his rotation right. Yep. All right. So rotation will be a factor. Let me do this, this, this. Let me know when you're ready, V. I got a picture of one pulled up. All right, I'll stop you here in just a second and come back to it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's stop here. So there is a tool to be able to check for rotation and check the rotation. I'm going to stop that share. Professor B is going to come up with the share. And I'm going to get a couple more pictures here while you're doing that. You see that one? Okay. Hey, we just want to use one of those. Okay, cool, cool. Now you'll notice there, 
what's the color coding on the leads? Red, white, blue. Red, white, blue. So red, white, blue should match A, B, C. So if I have wires coming out or going into where I need to check, wherever the point is I need to check, hold on one second. My wires should be marked red, white, and blue. And then I'm going to connect to the lug or the, or the point of connection with red, white, and blue. You see the little white button on the bottom lower right-hand side of it? Yeah. Yep. Press the button. Yep. All right. And it'll give you, you see there's a black dot in there and arrows on the top that go back and forth. And that black dot will spin inside that uh, rotation meter and it'll show you the rotation. Mm -hmm. Start spinning that way. You got clockwise. Start spinning backwards. You got counterclockwise. Now, what are some things that out there as far as you checking it that could mess up you checking it? And here's, here's a common one. I put the wrong lead to the wrong conductor. As soon as you do that, it's not going to give you the correct rotation. I don't, I've got red to the blue wire. I've got white to the white wire. And I've got the blue to the red wire. That's going to give you an incorrect rotation reading because, no, no. You, because you would swap leads. Question? Thought I heard somebody there. No, that was me. I was pulling up a video for a rotation meter, but the guy was in Hindu. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, they do have a, a, a plethora of different types of uh, rotation meter styles. You right. got digital ones. You got ones that have a little LED light scheme and everything like that. Uh, I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm old style here. This is probably, God, how long do you think this one's been around? So, well, since I started, you know, 30 yeah, this, years ago, I mean, there's, that's what we've always used. Yeah, this type and style meter for one, it's a knob, a knob meter. Uh, these things last forever. You take care of them. I, I mean, I know of knob meters, knob meters that are still out there in the world that I was at work the first day. So you're talking 40, 50 years. And another thing is, there's no electronics per se inside this thing. What do you think is inside the meter? A magnet? Magnets. Well, sorta, sorta. I'm checking three phase rotation to make sure my motor inside the establishment rotates the right way. So what do you think's inside this thing? Little motor. Yeah, it's a little mini three phase motor. That's all there is inside there. A little mini three phase motor that spins the direction of how it's energized. So, uh, you know, no, none of these resistors, capacitors, not a lot of electronics in it. Just one three-phase motor that you power up by pressing that uh, white button. Very reliable. And I think that's probably a good way to put it. Yep. There, oh. there is no, unless you put the leads in the wrong place, there is no getting this wrong. Right. When and you're checking rotation. I got a little video here. Like I said, the guy, he's speaking in Hindu, but I've got it at a point where it shows the leads clipping on secondary side and him mashing the button, spinning the yeah, rotation. Well, why don't you just go ahead and play it right there and just mute them and we can talk our way through it. All right. Let's go here, here. Can you guys see that? Yeah. yeah. All right. He's at the point where he's fixing to and see inside of these, there's a little jaws in there. You can open like alligator clips and he's going to snap them on the secondary leads and some bus work. He's got on secondary gloves, low voltage gloves. So he really doesn't have any markings to work with here unless he's able to see some cable interconnecting these. Right. But even with that, now this is a digital. There it goes. Well, it's got both. Yeah. All right, so pause it right there. So it's got both. Yeah. The L1, L2, L3, can you back that up a little bit and redo it again? Mm -hmm. You want the lights on or? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> all right, that shows that you've got, see how you got all three lit up? That shows that you've got connection to all three phases. You can get rotation with two. 
right. let you know that you have leads correctly installed on all three phases. Then that uh, white dot right there is the three phase motor inside. Make it go, Professor V. Damn, ah, that's quick. Yeah. You can see it's flowing, it's going clockwise on his meter. Mm -hmm. Now he's gonna reverse two of the legs to show counterclockwise. God, what is Alice so shaking in there? Oh, it's, it's guards. So you reverse two leads, any two leads, and it's going to go and go reverse. Right. So that's what we were talking about before. Make sure that your leads are connected to the right phase color. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to get a false reading. Right. And don't, and get, well, let me back that up right there, man. Hang on a second. I'll show, make sure you see something, understand about something. He is on secondary voltage. Let me back it up a little bit more. Um, let me go forward a hair. Right here. Don't be confused with this white lead. Do not put that on the neutral, just like Professor Shoemaker said a while ago. The neutral will, you know, can be marked with white tape. That does not signify that, hey, you need to put that lead on the neutral itself. They, these are for all three hot legs, mm -hmm. you know, not, not the neutral. Right. Um, there was actually, Duke was considering that right before I retired to changing that lead, get the manufacturer to change that lead color to yellow instead of white because people were um, putting that lead on the neutral. Huh. You know, I'm not sure if it's causing any kind of a short or in the meter itself, but um, that's what they're considering. I hadn't heard any more about that, but red, white, blue, and they do go on you know, all hot legs in the in the secondary of a transformer or a, or a panel like this, and it is good up to 600 volts is what I was reading on this other page okay. on the, the old um, rotation meter, so you can't use it on primary. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I think it's a good point here. It's 847. For us to take a break, let's say we're going to be back at about 8. Uh, let's, let's say nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock, straight up. All right, so we, we've been schooled on uh, the rotation meter, its purpose, what we need it for, and how it works, both in the uh, sense of when you, once you connect it, how to read the rotation, and two, uh, what to connect it to, the red, white, and blue go to A, B, C. Now, if, if you don't have the designation inside a transformer, first, when you're marking conductors, how do you know to go to, how do you know what's ABC? Do you have anything to follow? So when we look up at our power lines on the field, do we know it's ABC? Not really. I mean, no, you don't. You don't. Not really. Not that. Not out there in the real world. You can't tell. And there's there's a testing procedure to go through that. Like I said before, we'll get into that. We we'll get into electric power systems. But when it is it initially built, or somebody initially installs something, they'll do a process of what they call line phasing. All right. And from that point on, once you start to construct off what's already been constructed. So you need a secondary service or a, you need to extend primary or anything like that. You've already got it pre-designated for you. And I'll show you an instance of that on a, uh, on a map right here. A little bit hard to see, but it is still legible. Let's get this drilled down to the campus right here. University Boulevard and Victory Lane. So I'm going to share a screen with you guys. Share screen, screen one. Let me know if it becomes visible, please.
Everybody got that? You got that, V? Yep. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to drill down on the campus and uh, bring my guy, and we're going to ride down this road a little bit. Bam. See if we get an eyeball on the... I, I've, I've passed a little bit, so let me turn around. Yeah. Go this way just a touch. Okay. Uh, that might be close enough. Yeah, I think that'll do it. All right, so what we have here is we've got our three phases of conductor. And whoever did this underground installation right here, Jordan, if you can mute yourself. Whoever did this underground uh, installation here, they did a process called phasing. So they phased the overhead conductors. So they knew which one would be A, B, or C. Now, like we said before on our overhead conductors here, just by looking at them, we can't tell, and they might be in a different configuration. This might be C, this might be B, this might be A, or any combination of the three letters. Let me zoom into the cross arm here. I hope I'm in a good spot. I think I am. A little bit blurry in this photo. Let me back away a little bit and drive down the street just a touch. Okay. Still should be able to zoom into this. Yep. And I'm going to zoom right into the, right into the cross arm. This might be a little bit more difficult for you guys to see on your screen than mine. All right, do you see these yellow tags right here? Yes. All right, so the original uh, installer of the underground, not the overhead, the installer of the underground, well, I need to let the next person know after I install the underground, which phase is A, which phase is B, and which phase is C. And it's really hard to see on the wire. Can anybody make out this letter? Nope. Okay, it's A. That's an A and a yellow tag. This is C in a yellow tag, and this is B in a yellow tag. So that lets me know the overhead phases are A, C, B. Now there's also tape on the conductor right here where they've marked the conductor. So what color do you think this is? A. Red. What color do you think this is? White. That's C. C. Blue. Uh, blue. Blue, correct, and this is B. And then white. Right, so from this point on, now everybody knows when I go down to my next transformer, I can actually move my conductor to match whatever the transformer is. So my next is transformer that? down the line, how do you think I'm going to install it? A, B, C. So that, that's really how the designation goes. Uh, Lennon is still looking up where it comes from, right? Does that mean yes? I don't. I do move sign language. No, I'm I'm listening to what you're saying. Uh, oh, so you're not looking it up. Okay. So that that's how I know the designation from this point on of how it goes. And like I said, I mean it, it it's not a lengthy procedure, but it is got certain steps. We'll talk later in electrical power systems. How do I determine this is A? And there is a procedure to do that. Okay. So that's pretty much how it goes. And you know, I will show one more part while we're sitting on the screen. It gets into underground just a little bit, but it does help you out a lot. So let's go uh, three phase, underground, and this one. Let's try to pull up an image here. This works for overhead too. Uh, I think this one will work perfect. Oh, I meant to get the picture. I don't want to go to eBay. Okay, here we go. Okay. I'm going to open this image in a new tab. Zoom in on it. Ba Bam, sweet, fantastic. So you'll notice, and this is what they call an in-out transformer. <laughs> All right, I've got three phases in. 
on the left hand side and I've got three phases out. Now, typically it's hard to read here. I'll let you know. This is H1A, so that's A. This is H1B, H designates high side bushing. One designates input, A, B, C. So how would I put red, white, blue in here? A, B, C. You put a uh, red for A. Correct. White for blue. White for B. Or uh, white for B, I mean, and uh, blue for C. Right, and the same thing on the output now. Red, white, blue, so they both match. The nice thing about it is once I do it on the primary side, these bushings are X. So I have an XO, that's neutral. X1, A, X2, B, X3, C. Now, Professor V brought it up there a couple of times there. Can I use a rotation meter on primary? No. No, no, the meter's for secondary only. But if I have my designations correct, I've got red, white, blue, red, white, blue, inbound, and then wire outbound, the secondary lugs correlate. One, H1A is X1. A, X1, B, X2, C, X3. So now I can throw my rotation meter on. Where would it go? This is neutral. X1, red, A. X2, white, B. X3, blue, C. So that's how I can check my rotation. Yeah, that's a little bit further on in the course, both in underground electrical power systems. But I just want to let you know, you know, where are we headed with this to be able to make sure we got the right rotation. Okay. Any questions there? I'm gonna stop sharing that screen. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna push on here a little bit. We're on page three nineteen. Now we're gonna get start getting into transformers as a whole. We talked about three phase. We talked about single phase. And really, you've heard a lot of this already, and that's that's why I like to teach in the courses. When we started in math, the first thing we did was went into transformers. So a lot of this you already know, some of it you do not because we're gonna add additional types of transformers into this, uh, into this learning right here. So you know, trans I'm on page uh, 320. You know transformer formulas. For math, we use a one to 30 number for 7,200 and 240, right? For winding formulas, we, we reverse that. There are more primary turns, there are secondary turns. So in figure 13-1 at the bottom, what's the ratio of that transformer? 1,000 to 250. Easy math here. Divide 1,000 by 250 gives you what? Four to one. Four to one winding ratio. If we need to compute math, it's one to four. That just helps out in our math processes, all right? The types of transformers that we use in the industry on page 321 are isolation transformers, all right? There is no physical contact between the two, and you'll see that in the figure in the bottom. That's why they add the two dashed lines in between. Primary gives off a magnetic field. Secondary receives that mag magnetic field, and that's attached to a load. All right, we know the basic operating trans, uh, principles of a transformer, okay? All that is really stuff we know. Turns ratios, they have load ratios. We've done all this. So let's move, move up to, uh, that's a lot. Professor V was not uh, current transformers in that chapter. CTs. No, I don't see it. 
Mm. Hold on one second, guys. I don't like, I wish they would put them all in one spot. What we're going to talk about here in just a moment is what they call a current transformer. This is on the exam today. Let's see. Chime circuit breaker circuits clamp on. Hmm. That would be 203. 203 of your books. All right. Current transformers, bottom of page 203. And I'll read this paragraph right here. When a large amount of AC current, now this is, you gotta be specific right here. We're not measuring a large amount, large amount of AC voltage. We need to measure a large amount of AC current must be measured. A different type of current transformer, CT, is connected in the power line. These transformers have ratios that start at 200 to five and can have ratios of several thousands to five. These current transformers generally referred to in, at, in the industry as CTs have a standard secondary current rating of five amps AC. They are designed to be operated with five amps DC and an ammeter, which I have never used, not an amp meter, but an ammeter is connected directly to their secondary winding, which produces a short circuit, okay? So really what they're doing this process here and what we wanna look at is actually the diagram on page 204, the, the illustration on 204 is, you, have you guys looked at your meter base on your house or seen the meter on your house? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, when you use the meter in your presentations, right? That's, that's metering. What makes it turn is amperage, right? Voltage, pressure can be present on it, but the meter cannot, will not move unless you turn something on in your house. Once current flows, that meter is gonna turn. So we can house it all in a nice little bundle right there, okay? When we have high amounts of current or a lot of current to measure, all right, all of that is not going to fit inside a meter base. And I'll show you an example here. So a current transformer is a meter? No, no. It does help in the metering process is where we're headed right here. Okay. So let me do a share screen right here. And you'll notice you'll see that the uh, figure 8-20 on the pod, uh, top of page 204, you see, we call them donuts, all right? The wire goes through the hole in the donut. Yep. Let me share the screen. All right, you see this pad mount transformer, correct? Yep. All right, hold on one second. Did I start the recording back? Yes. Okay. All right, now you see all the secondary wires that are coming off this transformer right here? All right, first, is this American? Looks like it. Yeah. It is. Okay. Does the, and this is a great question right here. Let's see if you guys figure this out. Does the secondary wire belong to the electrician or the utility? Electrician. Electrician. How do you know? Brown, orange, and yellow. Brown, orange, and yellow. Yeah. There, there are companies that uh, do allow, if the electrician wants to install all their own conductor, they can do that. Now it's costly. But they can do that. They designated it, the brown's out of sight here, brown, orange, yellow. So I know when I walk up to this transformer right away, <clears throat> secondary belongs to the electrician. If there's anything that's wrong with it, they need to take care of it. If it was marked red, white, blue, what what's up? Would that would that be like something you would see at like a uh, like a big manufacturing plant where they have like their own electrician or something? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. If it was marked red, white, blue and it went from here into the whatever the industry was, I know that the secondary belonged to me, and if it failed, I needed to repair it. All right, so now obviously, will all of this fit into a meter base to where I can meter it? No. No, no, man. Look at the size of these conductors and look at the amount. What's happening outside of here is they're taking that CT that you just saw, that current transform that you see in the diagram, 
and they are funneling this wire through those CTs. All right, it's gonna be, especially with this size and this amount, it's gonna be a really, really high amount of amperage. I need to transform that amperage down so then I can put one wire into a meter base and meter it. That's what a current transformer does. It takes a high amount of amperage, converts it down, transforms it down, and now I have the capability to meter it. That's its purpose right there. That's one of its purposes. For today, that's what we're talking about as far as a current transformer. So if you had to give a description, what would you give a description for a current transform? Takes a high amount of voltage and transfer into a, a... No, no. We just said that just a minute ago. Current. Current, my bad. Current right. transformer, yeah. Hear it in the description. So, it, 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 so the current transformer, I think it uh, uh, increases... So it steps up voltage, but decreases current to a safely measure. You guys need to take voltage out of the equation. Right? Okay. There is nothing that says transform voltage in this thing. Oh, current got it, got it. Transform. Yeah. That's all, that's all, we, that's the name of it. Current transformer. Flip the words. You see that question right, right there? That's the first two words in your answer. Current right. transformers transform current to a lower level that could be metered. Yeah, I mean, there you go. Uh, you know, I was thinking because it is a transformer. It's a current transformer. If it steps down the current, wouldn't wouldn't the voltage go up? I know I'm no. mentioning. The no, no, it, does, it has nothing to do with voltage. And if you look at it, you see the picture that's in there, yes, sir. All right, is there any physical contact where I can make an electrical connection? Ah, I get it. So it's it's it goes off of uh, inductance. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, cool. And the and the windings configured in there. Look at the one that you see in your picture right there. The windings that they have inside here that are doing the induction are what six hundred to what? I see a Google. I mean, I think you're sharing a Google screen. Uh, six hundred to five. Uh, yeah. What, yeah. What's I mean, is that hurting you or something? What? Uh, My Google picture screen? we're looking at. Yeah, I want. I thought you were still referring to the picture, but I. I'm not. No, I said picture in the book. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. So that's a 600 to 5 current transformer. So if I have 600 amps on the conductor that's going through it, how many amps of output am I going to get? Five. Five, exactly. All right. Five is measurable. I can put that into a normal meter and measure it and monitor it. If I've got 1,200 amps going through there, how many amps are I going to get out? 10. 10. Exactly. 10 is measurable and meterable. I cannot put 1200 amps into a regular meter. It's going to burn it up. So that's the purpose of a current transformer in this case. There are more purposes for them later on, but that's what it is for the uh, for today. Okay. I'm sorry I have my Google screen up there. <laughs> All right. So Professor V. You, we are caught up. Yep. With that, what time are we holding right there? Nine twenty-one. Okay. So current transformer, you got that. The the purpose of a rotation meter and why we're using that in the industry to be able to square array rotation. Uh, you know what an analog voltmeter is. You know what an amp meter is. You know what phasing sticks are on purpose. Why? Why do we use, in what cases do we use a voltmeter? What voltages? Um, secondary. Secondary. How do we measure primary voltage? Phasing sticks. There you go. There you go. And because it's a such higher voltage. Okay. All right. So we will discuss this. Go back to Y and Delta here. That's going to be the end of the future. Make sure I got everything covered. Alternating current we got covered. I like to, you know, I like to show this to you guys because 
it's really quick and easy. I'm going to throw up a couple of pictures here. All right, let's say utility, open, delta. <clears throat> now when I put, <clears throat> excuse me, when I put bank at the end of uh, my saying right here, when we're talking about banking transformers, we're going to be taking transformers and you guys are going to have to do this on paper in a drawing. You're going to have to do this uh, out there in the field, actually build banks of transformers. And we have a banking simulator too that is actually going to show you voltages in and out to make sure that you got your banking correct. So when I bank transformers, I'm taking trans individual transformers and I'm building them and configuring them to be able to get three phase power out of them. We already know it. If I take one transformer and hang it on the pole, what kind of voltage am I going to get out of it? Single phase or three phase? Single. Single phase. I'm only going to get one neutral and two hot legs. When I start building three phase banks, uh, what kind of power am I going to get out of it? Secondary. Three phase. three phase. One neutral, three energized hot legs. Okay. So let's go to some images right here. This is very, very quick and easy. I put in my, uh, uh, what do you call it, Google search line. And remember, this, this helps through the entire course. Uh, some of you had that problem with voltage regulator. You put a voltage regulator in Google and you came up with this little piece of electronic equipment. That's not a utility voltage regulator. Throw another word in there, utility voltage regulator. I threw in utility open delta bank or substation or a power company. Use that extra word right there. You're going to get more things that are uh, pertaining to the utilities. So I'm going to open this image up in a new tab. It is grossly small. All right. Did anybody see what I what I wrote in for my search? Open delta. Open delta bank. Now. Just by looking at this, and don't you know, avoid this right here. Just by looking at this, I've got two transformers in my bank. How do I know that this is an open delta bank? Remember the drawing. How many coils did I have in my drawing when I first did that this morning? Two. Two. Two coils, two transformers. So if you're driving around town and you see two transformers, one on the left, one on the right. You already know right off the bat what kind of bank it is. What kind of bank is it? Open Delta. Open Delta. Okay. Fantastic. You guys are going to be professionals here in a minute. All right. I'm going to put utility Y bank. Okay. Uh, we might have yeah, this one. Now there's some things to look out here for. Does the Y bank and the closed Delta bank have three transformers? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yes, I do. The Y and the Delta both had three transformers here. So there's additional things that are going to be needed to look for. Now in Delta, when we have Delta, the center transformer will power your house, just like any normal single phase transformer would do on Delta. This one, look at it closely, will it power your house carefully? I've got one neutral, one hot leg. What am I missing over here? A ground. That neutral and ground is right here. You can tell by that little band. See that band? That band is right there. All right. What am I missing? Another hot leg. Another hot leg. So I can identify right away if I look at the center transformer and I tell myself, that's not going to be able to power my house. I need 120, 240. It's immediately a Y bank. 
I can only get two wires out of this. We'll get into the physics and the calculations here in a little bit to get prephase out of it. I want you guys to get familiar with identification. If I took this transformer completely away, what kind of bank would this be? Uh, open delta. Open delta. I've only got two. Okay. If I have a transformer in the center that will not power my home, they call it a lighting transformer. What kind of bank is this? A Y. Y bank. Okay. Closed delta is actually harder to find. Let's see what happens here. Utility. Closed delta. They're phasing away a lot of closed delta. D E L T A. Because it just utility closed delta bank. Because uh, electronics and electric electricity have just become much more efficient. Let's see if I can find the right one. Okay, is that it? That's about it. Uh, this is not it. <laughs> I tell you, closed delta is hard to find. I can actually draw it faster than I could probably do this. So hold on one second. Stop the share. Start your new share. And guys, when we talk these configurations of banks and whatnot, these are the majority of what you're going to see as far as you working in the industry. When you start talking three phase, let me clear the screen off. Uh, clear no drawings. Okay. Everybody see my share white screen? Yep. So I'm going to do a Y on the top. And we're just talking secondary for the time being. I need to have how many transformers? Three. 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 Okay. Here we go. All right. One, two, three. That's how our transformers are configured. Two, three, and one, two, three. All right, so I'm going to use, I'm going to put a wire between here and here, a wire between here and here, and that was going to go to neutral ground. I have a wire out of here, 120, and I have a wire out of here, 120. And don't worry about all of this math and everything and wiring going on. I just want you to see what's happening. We're going to have wire to here, 120. We're looking for identification purposes at the center transformer. Will that transformer power our house? No. No, it will not. Okay. So we immediately know that's why. All right. Let me clear this off. That's what we just looked at. And that's an open wire? No. How many transformers do I have? Oh, three. Three. If you've got three in the configuration, it's always closed. So for it to um, be like a closed delta, do we just need that extra hot wire? Watch my drawing. It's going to come up here in just a second. I'll clear this drawing. All right. Closed delta. How many transformers do I need? Closed. Three. Excellent. One. Two. Three. One, two, three. These are my bushings that come on all transformers. You will find some out there that are pre-built. So if I'm going to go with closed delta, obviously I've got to have something. And this is, you know, we're going to get into teaching drawings here in a little while. I'm going to have to one that powers a house. 120. 120. And the combination of the two is 240. All right. And like I said, we are just going here for identification purposes. Here's my fourth and last leg, and you can actually join these right here. Okay? Identification purposes. You see three transformers on the pole, and this center one has a neutral and two hot legs coming out of it straight down. What is it? A delta. Make sure you're descriptive. Closed delta. Closed delta. Really, in simplicity, right there, that's closed delta that you're looking at. Watch this. This is pretty cool, and it'll help on your drawings later on. We're, don't worry about them right now, but this is pretty cool. All right, ready? I'm just erasing. What kind of bank is that? 
an open delta. There open you delta. go. All right. I just removed one transformer out of the situation right here, and I immediately made it open delta. So I just want you guys to right now know the identification part. If you were to drive by or stand by three transformers on a pole and look at this, the center transformer for three transformers is going to be your primer. All right, that's going to be the one that tells you either Y or uh, Delta. Three wires coming out of the center transformer, Delta. Three transformers, closed Delta. Two transformers, open Delta. Two wires coming out of the, same, uh, the center transformer, Y. That's how you're able to designate those. And I can guarantee you, when you're going out there and you're a first responder or you're looking up on a trouble call and you're looking at a bank of free transformers, if somebody asks you, hey, either for trouble purposes or troubleshooting purposes or whatever, you look straight up, center transformer's got three wires coming out of it going straight down. Closed delta or open delta if you have two transformers. Center transformer only has two wires coming out of it. Why? Okay. We're going to get deep into this stuff right here. Yeah. And really, what it comes to in, in the long run, guys, do you think they're pre made? Probably not. Nope, nope. You're going to have to know all the wiring processes. You're going to load up three transformers on your truck in the morning, and then uh, you're going to have two, three other guys on your crew. They're going to be setting the pole, uh, tying wire in, and getting the pole ready for the bank of transformers. All these transformers have to be made up. They have to be constructed down, you know, on your truck. Who's doing that? The groundsman. The groundsman. Yeah, you are. Two is when you get into an <clears throat> industry, some of the, a lot of industries pre-test on this. So I, I know I told you about the outside skill set test. A lot of them will say just a simple question. They'll throw a picture up just like this one. Closed delta, open delta, or Y. Bang. You guys know it right away. Okay. Professor B, I'm showing about 9.35. You want to go to about 9.50 on a break and wind, okay. it up, wind it up with an exam review? Let's do it. All right, let's have that. 9.50, gentlemen, we're going to have our exam review, and then uh, we're going to turn you loose to blow this thing up, man. <laughs> Boom. Blow it up. Boom, boom. Did you find it yet, Lanny? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Professor V is uh, gearing up here for a review of the exam that's coming up. Guys, it's a great time to ask questions. Like I said, we're not going to give answers. But if you have a question about a question, Now's the time to ask it. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go to this. Quizzes. Exam. I'm looking here. Oh, oh. Uh, to let my guys know, I think Professor B had already done this. Mm -hmm. uh, Quiz four on the written question at the end there. I have graded all those. So you Mine are done. Your, yeah, your grade should be updated for that if you want to recheck that. Yeah. You did too well. All right. Sounds. Oh, here we go. All right. Are we ready? Okay. Are you going to do any notation on any whiteboards, for examples? Or? Uh, yeah, I'll throw one up there just in case something comes up. Okay. Oh, Mr. Schumacher. What's up, buddy? The video for uh, uh, Monday's class. Yeah. It's not up. I know. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and we knew that yesterday. Okay. I'll throw it up today. Throw it up. Okay. I can only video two things, or one thing at a time. Okay, so let's go whiteboard and share. 
clear this off and I'll be ready, Professor B. Is everybody back? You, you'll never get that answer. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't see a yeah. lot of faces. Well, uh, you know, we've had to do this before with other classes. Let's see faces. Faces. Ooh, there's Randall. Jordan's here. Yeah, I hear Jordan. Wow. There's a dark, there's Ross. Okay. All right. We'll go ahead and get started on this review. And guys, it is 25 questions. This is stuff that we've already covered. Some of it was covered today. So that part of it should be very fresh in your mind. Yesterday should be very fresh in your mind. All right. No answers, please, unless you have questions and then we'll discuss it. When the uh, multiple choices come up here, Professor V, are you going to state what the choices are? I can. Okay. All right. The first question one, define what volts are. Is it electric pressure, electric flow, electric impedance, electric power? Okay. okay. Question two, what is the electrical frequency of the United States? 50 Hertz, 60 Hertz, 120 degrees, 180 Hertz. And let me tell you on some of these questions, guys, don't, don't hurry through it. Take your time and just think, think, your, think the question through, think your answer through, and um, then proceed. Define, question three, define amperage slash current. Is it electrical pressure, uh, electric flow, electric impedance, electric power? Next question. Define impedance in a conductor. Is it electric pressure, electric flow, electric resistance in a conductor, or electric power? Moving on. Question five. Listen to it good. I'll draw this one. Okay. In one 60 hertz sine wave, how many times is there no voltage? Is it once, twice, three times, or four times? Okay, don't answer it. Just look at your sine wave. Remember, this is the zero neutral line, and we ground it. Okay? Okay. That same picture. How many degrees of rotation are there in one full cycle? So remember by the video, and it's in the book also, you've got degree values. Here, I mean, all through it. Here, 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 and here. Yeah, that's one full rotation. How many degrees is that? Yeah. 180, 90, 270, or 360. All right. Question seven. When this is true, false. When current flows through a wire, a magnetic field is created around the wire, true or false. And true, false. Question eight. When a conductor is cut by a magnetic field or lines of force, voltage is induced into the conductor, true or false. Watch my diagram here. Primary, okay. secondary, magnetic field. Cuts across. Is voltage produced? True or false? Okay. Number nine. In normal operation, is a distribution feeder circuit series or parallel? Now we had a little debate and discussion about this. Here's my breaker. I go out here and I'll go out of my system. Come out to a point and I stop. Is that series or parallel? Okay. okay. Next question. What instrument would you use to check um, secondary voltage? Would you use an amp meter, a voltmeter, phasing sticks, or an ohm meter? Next question. 
which wire slash conductor must not be in the jaws of an amp meter when checking amperage? So I've got a neutral hot hot. What wire cannot be in there when checking amperage? A phase, C phase, neutral, or B phase? Which one? Oh, so we're going three phase on that question. Okay. Yes. So hot, 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 A, B, C. What wire cannot be in there is going to give you a false reading. Okay. No questions? Hearing none, next question. What are three types of AC loads? Oh, okay. Three types. So let me see if I can throw this out here. Uh, the three. One gives off heat and light. One uh, turns a motor. <clears throat> and one we put out there because of motors. Motors. What do we do to offset motor load? Yeah. That's multiple choice, right? It is. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Question 13. Name the color codes for phasing A, B, C in that order. Wow. I'm not even going to write it out. Too yeah. simple. The, I'll read you the. the the, the um, choices you have. Brown, orange, yellow, red, yellow, blue, red, orange, yellow, red, white. <laughs> Mer okay. okay. Question 14. Which one of these is a resistive load? Is it a lamp, motor, ballast, or transformer? So we're going to think resistive. Give me the choices again. Lamp, motor, ballast, or transformer. Okay. While we're sitting here on this, because we've gone a little bit back and forth, does everybody know what a ballast is? Like a light? Well, it, it, it's in fluorescent lights. A transformer transformers, transforms voltages all the time. A ballast in a light transforms for an amount of time. It's, it's like a starter. It transforms and raises the voltages for a certain amount of time until the light is ignited. Then it goes back to normal. That's, that's the short definition for it. But still, Transformer, transformer, as far as this question is concerned, he's looking for a resistive load. What fits here as far as a resistive load is concerned? Okay. All right. No questions. Moving on. How is 240 volts obtained? from a single phase transformer. This was on yesterday's test. Is the picture in there for that one again? No, it's, it's multiple choice. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll read the choices. Is it by using a voltmeter? Current flows opposite directions across secondary windings. Current flows across both secondary and primary windings at the same time. Wow, yeah. Got the one word in there, the one word in the answer yep. gives it away. Yep. Hearing no questions with that one, I'll move on. Why are distribution line capacitors used? Yeah, so we saw the uh, we saw the picture that I showed yesterday out near the campus, and what kind of load what, what is a, a dominant out here at the campus. So why do we use capacitors? That's multiple choice as well. Is it to offset resistive loads, to offset capacitive loads, 
or to offset inductive loads. Okay. Next question. If the current or amps demand in a circuit is greater than the supplied voltage, the voltage is what? All right, so hold there, guys. Even I still do this today. Draw this out on a piece of paper. So I'm gonna draw two lines. And the, I don't even, I'm not even listening to his question right now. Uh, and I draw two. One's ahead, one's behind. Then I'm gonna refer back to the question again. Okay. All right, go ahead and say it. Yep, you ready? Uh-huh. If the current or amps demand in a circuit is greater than the supplied voltage. Stop, All right? It's greater, my A is in front. Mm -hmm. Amps, go ahead. It's greater. Then my supplied voltage, it's behind. Right. Right. The voltage is what? Voltage. So he's asking about that. that that's what keeps me straight. And my voltage, and you'll see by the drawing, because I drew it out, what that answer is going to be. And go ahead and give me multiple choices. Multiple choices. Leading, lagging, lower, or higher. There you go. There you go. Okay. I would highly recommend you draw that question out because I get confused just by the words. Draw yep. it out. Question 17. Okay. No questions. Uh, well, uh, Lenny. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I was just trying to make sure I was mute. Um, there was a question, right? Um, on the on the homework. And uh, I know you know, we have not assigned homework. Ever. I mean, not a homework, a quiz. I, like, yeah. so I stand corrected. A quiz. <laughs> right? Um, hold on. Let me find a question, and then I will talk about it. Um, and then, well, get an answer. Which quiz are you referring to? Uh, the quiz from, from yesterday. Okay. Before yesterday. Before. Yeah, and it was uh, basically the question was in um in both phase. The written out one. No, not the written out one. No, we he just addressed that. Um, I'm talking about it, it, the question was in both a conductive and capacitance uh, circuit, both I mean uh, the amperage and the and the voltage. Uh, will lag, and then and then it was a choice. Well, anyway, the answer was um, 180 degrees on the. the All right, the v, quiz, you stay, v, you stay there. I want to go back to quiz four so I can take a look at it. Looking at right now. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we might as well. Even though it's not on this quiz. All right, silence. Quizzes. You know, what number was that, uh, Lenny? Right now, that's what, that's what, that's what I'm looking for right Look now. at question 12. 12 and quiz four? I think so. All right, stand by. So silence, quizzes, quiz four. Question four. How many cycles are there in one second? That's four. Is that the one you're talking about, Lance? Twelve. Twelve. No, sir. Hold on. No, sir. Twelve. Both pure inductive and capacitive loads. Oh, okay. Wait. No, no, it's not that one. Okay. Um. And inductive loads characteristics are? Um, two types of loads, hold on. I'm, 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 I'm just going to. Let's see. Oh. The, it's question number 12. 12, yeah, okay. Both pure inductive and capacitive loads, volts, 
and amps are, and it, it came out to 180 degrees. Correct. Um, then, and then um, as I was using yesterday, hold on. Um, and let me get this right here, hold on. It says, um, page uh, 270 says, in a pure inductive circuit, the current lags the applied voltage by 90 degrees, and a pure capacitive uh, circuit, the current leaves the applied voltage by 90 degrees. Okay. And what does the drawing show? Say what? The drawing show. The, the drawing? Yeah. Um, hold on, let me see. Uh, yeah, there's no drawing over here, but it's just it's just what it says on two page two seventy. Yeah, I don't know. So I'm on that first track right there. Okay. Did you get it wrong? Did you get it wrong? Yeah, I got it wrong. It said I, I selected 90 degrees and I got it wrong. Okay. Yeah, 180, uh, the, 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 the quiz had uh, stated uh, 180 degrees was the correct answer. Okay. Uh, can we talk about this afterwards so we can finish what we were doing? Absolutely, absolutely. I didn't mean to hold people up, man. you know, all right. Okay, all right. we'll work on it. We'll work on it after we get done right here in this session. All right. All right. Okay. Okay, go ahead. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Moving on, no other questions with that. Um, question 18, a blank transformer is used to measure high amperage loads, potential, Isolation, current, or auto? That's fill in the blank. Is that meter or measure or just measure? A transformer used to meter or measure. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So obviously I've got to transform. If I need to transform current, what am I going to use? Okay. Not transform voltage, transform current. Mm -hmm. Okay, hearing no questions. 19, a blank normally protects a tap line. Is uh, it? That was off our presentation. Yep. yep. Is it an arrestor? Is it a transformer? Is it a breaker? Is it a fuse? A blank normally protects a tap line. Okay. Question, with a rotation meter, with the rotation meter leads, RWB, how do they attach to each phase? How do they correlate to each phase? Yeah. Red, white, blue, is it CAB, BAC, ABC, XYZ? So you gotta match the color coding with the phase and that multiple choice answer. Okay. Next question. Go ahead. <clears throat> what does a step up transformer do? No, that's cool. Multiple choice. Does it 
step down voltage, step up amperage, or step up voltage. Okay. 22. Why are transmission voltages so high? It's multiple choice. Is it to A, raise the amperage? Is it to transmit long distances? Is it to increase conductor size or to distribute to customers? Well, I know three that don't match. Exactly. All right. 23, what regulates voltage on a feeder circuit? That was in your presentation. Yep. Uh, if you got that one right. Yes. Uh, remember that's gonna to pertain to a substation, a voltage regulator that we're talking about was in a substation. Yep. What does it do? Yep. What it regulates a voltage? Yep. Pastor bank, breaker, fuse, or regulator? Those are your options. Question number 24. What three components are needed to create electricity? Ah. This is your options. Three components needed to create electricity. Wattage, amperage, voltage, coal, wind, hydro, Magnetic field, conductor, movement. Okay. Last question, true, false. The magnetic field of an energized line can energize a line that is supposed to be de-energized, true or false? Oh yeah, I think I'm gonna refer back to that video of that guy. Yeah. Look at truck. Yep. Exactly. Okay. And that was number 25, folks. Any questions? What was number three and four again? Three was define amperage slash current. Number four was define impedance in a conductor. Thank you. Welcome. Lenny. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, let me hold on there in case anybody else wants to ask a question. Any further questions? Okay. Hearing mm -hmm. that is the review. All right, y'all have a good one. What? No, I don't get one. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> right. Lenny, if you page, turn to page 259, figure 10-6. Yes, sir. What does that say? Um, all right. 259, um, you, okay, where it says computing the induced voltage? Uh, just figure 10-6. Figure 10-6, the applied voltage and induced voltage are 180 degrees out of phase with with each other. Yeah, but um, that's in a, that's just, uh, um, it shows a, um, it doesn't show a capacitor there though. It's, it could be either one. Regardless, if it's a if resistive in phase, if it's inductive, it's 180 out. If it's capacitive, it's 180 out in a pure circuit, not a uh, one that's got conductive. But that's they're talking about voltage, you know, mm -hmm. they're talking about vo uh, the, the applied voltage with the induced voltage. Right. What was voltage versus amperage? Right, that's going to be 180 degrees out also. That's not that's not what two page two seventy says. <laughs> You're thinking of both waves together, right? No, it says. You're thinking of a voltage wave and an amperage wave together, right? Excuse me. 
You're thinking of a voltage and an amperage wave at the same time, correct? No, sir. No, sir. Individually, it says. So voltage, well, so voltage sine wave by itself is 108 degrees out of itself. That's 10.6. Let me All get right. to 270. No, but it, I mean. It, it, Let me get to 270. Huh? Let me get to 270. Roger that. Roger that. Okay. Right. 270. All right. So in a pure to see him, I'm going to start at the top. So inductors oppose the change in current and capacitors oppose the change of voltage. In a pure inductive circuit, the current lags. Yeah, that's current and voltage. You said it wasn't. Yeah, that's current and voltage. Right. Uh, but the question, and, and that's exactly what the question says, current and voltage. Let me go back to the question. Huh? Let me go back to the question. Let me go back yes, to the question. You might have this one. That was 12, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Pure and loads. Wait, it's loading up. Voltage. Hey, you're, you're good. I'll fix that for you. Can you fix that for me? It's in your grade book. Uh, yep. Okay. Yeah, we were, we worded that question wrong. All right, I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, well, don't be sorry. Nobody, you know, but damn, you know what I'm saying? Don't be sorry. It's okay. All right. Um, so you, and, but, you know, there was a there was a question there about you know that I I miss I miss uh um like basically I I answered the wrong one, but I I knew the right answer. And it was um, on the um, on uh, um, a resist resistive uh, load. Uh huh. That's uh, beam. Yeah, that was the one before it. it wasn't was the one before or it a was resistive it? load characteristics? Uh, hold on. The resistive. Yeah, there was. I think it was the the inductance. The, either the inductance or the capacitive. I had put uh, that it was a uh, heat and light, but that's that's resistive. But I, I mean, I knew better. That was. I, I'll take, I'll own that one. You know what I'm saying? That was me just being careless. What'd you put for an answer? Uh, let me see. Um, I can't see it because you're in B's class. What What number, Lenny? 11, I think. Uh, yeah, hold on, hold on. Let you me got that one right. No, 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 no. Pure resistive wave. No, uh, sorry. Uh, a resistive load characteristics, eight. Sorry. You got that one right. Um, so why are we complaining here? No, I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, pointing that out. That Wait, you missed number nine. And nine. In, in I think it was on the inductive or capacitive loads. One of those. Let me let, I'll number look. Nine. Oh, yeah. I got so an inductive loads characteristics are, here's your choices, produces light and heat, turns the motor, it's a capacitor. Yeah, and I put, and I put light and heat by accident. Oh. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I know. Um, and I put light and heat by accident. That's, that's getting too much of a hurry. That's what I was saying. Uh, yeah. That's from that's yes, hurry mm -hmm. All right. So he's going to fix your question there. It's fixed. It's fixed already. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Winner. Reed. Appreciate yeah. it. All right. So we'll have to watch the wording of that question next time, Dave. Right. Okay. Anything? Uh, Mr. Ambry, do you have a question? All right. Yes, sir. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, I, th I thought a lot of people left. Everybody's still here. Yeah. That's all I've got for today. Uh, we will up. I will upload. It's gonna take a little time because both videos for today. I'll upload this one first, so you can get to it first. Then I'll upload yesterday's <laughs> after that, and Thank we you. will post on Remind when everything's available. Yes, Just sir. All right, guys, have a good day. If the uh, weather looks good, which it should be, we will see you tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. on the field. Thank you, Mr. Shoemaker, and thank you, oh, for, uh, thank you for your patience. No problem, man. Have a good day. Roger, you too. All right, bud.